Welcome to the Jingle Boom Girls. Oops, I mean the Glitter Boom Girls. Yeah, you guessed it. Today on our little nostalgia podcast, we are discussing Christmas memories. I'm Robbie Yay. McPherson on the East Coast. I'm Amy Asberg on the West Coast. Uh, so Amy and I decided that um, because it's, you know, getting close to the holidays and everything, it'll be really fun to just go through and reminisce about our favorite Christmases, um, you know, and, and all of, all of you guys are fellow Gen Xers and people who might just be interested in this stuff, uh, can relate. And we want to hear from you too. So DM us. And also I'd like to add one thing. Yeah. If, if you don't wondering why we're not talking about Kwanzaa or Hanukkah, it's because we just celebrated Christmas as kids so we can only speak on our experiences absolutely true yeah yeah that's that's 100 percent true it just happens to be you know what we did in my house so I can yeah only reminisce about that but by no means do we think Christmas is the only holiday of course not right right um, we are all inclusive here on the Glitter Boom Girls show um so aim let's start Ooh. with you Let's uh, let's let's just make it simple. What okay. was your what was your favorite Christmas? When I say when I say favorite Christmas or best Christmas, what pops in your head? What pops in my head is the year I got a bunch of like early '80s Barbie stuff. Oh yeah, nice. I got like the Barbie Corvette with this little tiny short. It had a wire on it. You guys, it was not like the, you know drones that you can now like <laughs> wi-fi them all over the place it was like this one foot cord with the car so i had to like walk alongside the car like really close basically i had to like crawl with the corvette oh you mean it was like a pull toy no the the remote control oh <laughs> was attached with a wire to the damn car you guys <laughs> so it was not so was actually like, a yeah, remote control. yellow barbie corvette but the wire was so damn short that i was basically like following the freaking car i might as well just have pushed it myself you just went in a circle <laughs> anyway it was very well made great barbie corvette it was the yellow one with the kind of orange seats and that year i also got you know i think some oh i think i got the barbie head styling head that i always tell you guys about which was oh, so freaking amazing super jealous and then every one. time i would like style something on it i would display it and be like wait now I can't play with it again because I'm displaying it. Right. And and it was one of those Christmases where you open up things you didn't even know you wanted. You were like, what? It was just so magical and crazy. My parents didn't give us Christmas up until around then because they were in this crazy ass cult, as I've spoken before, like super, super uh, religious, like hippie, weird, like whatever. Now, a story for another day. But anyway, they started doing Christmas when we got into school Cause we were like, where the hell is Christmas? These kids at school were making like these, these hand print Rudolphs. Like, what is this all about? You know, anyway, <laughs> I remember those. We started seeing all the Christmas stuff on TV. We're like, come on, you know? So anyway, yeah, we finally started getting Christmas and, uh, just a great, great time opening up all these, just throwing this paper everywhere and just trashing the living room and just joyousness. Did your parents, um, now the, the whole wrapping thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like there's two kinds of households. There's, uh -huh. well, no, maybe three. Okay. There's one household where the wrapping is an art form, you know, like there's creases, right. there's double-sided invisible tape. That's my house. Yeah. You know? Oh, right okay. Now. Okay. No, oh, right now, you know, that's, that's your house. house. Um, and then there's the, just kind of wrap it up and stick it, you know, and, and that the paper's was, cheap and crappy. That was my mom. And I really loved it. She just stuck bows on everything the night before, like those little stick on bows. And, uh, you know, you just trashed the entire room and uh, you trash it. All little stick on bows you stick on yourself. You're all excited. <laughs> whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's the third one, though, which is you get it wrapped at the store like you pay, you know, somebody to, to wrap it at the store. Um, so the Barbie head. Mm -hmm. I think I think the let's talk about the Barbie head for a second because the Ooh, Barbie head Barbie head to me I feel like that is a legendary Christmas gift like so legendary right because I uh -huh. I mean I don't know any Gen X age women 
who did not covet or receive yep. or in some cases destroy the Barbie head. Cause you know, I well, cried over that thing when I saw it in the series catalog <laughs> in the summer, I literally wept over it. I was like, if I don't get this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did get one, but it was not the Barbie head. You know, it was like the Betty head or like something. Ah, oh, um, my sister got that one. The knockoff. Yeah. Yeah. But it was the super long neck. The neck was so long. You're like, okay, I'm disturbed. Yeah. And, and it, I ended up, um, uh, applying marker makeup to her right. and really ruining her face. But, yeah. um, you know, that's kind of what you did after a certain period of time. I, uh, so my favorite Christmas ah. was the Christmas, uh, it was a bicentennial Christmas. It was a Christmas of night. Well, actually it was a Christmas of 75 going into okay. 76. So it wasn't quite the bicentennial, but yeah. Um, we had just moved to this house, uh, this kind of stone cabin house in the woods that I've often talked scary about. scary house, the, the Friday 13th house. Yeah, Friday yeah, exactly. 13th. On the lake. Yes. Yeah. The quarry house. Camp Crystal Lake, my childhood home. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it was an old, old hunting cabin type thing, right? So it didn't have all these, it wasn't really super modern, but the electricity went out. The power went out that year for uh -oh. us. And we had a gas stove, so mom was able to cook. So she made coffee, and so the whole house smelled like coffee. And we had this huge fireplace, like a big, you know, wall size kind of huge stone fireplace. So dad built a blazing fire in there. Lovely. And we opened the presents by the firelight. We didn't have the Christmas lights on the Christmas tree, but the tree was up. And let's all give a shout out to the string tinsel. Right? The old Loved school, it. like, you know, icicle tinsel. Yes. So, and for that Christmas, I, this was really cool. Like, my mom, mm -hmm. when my mom used to go shopping for me as a kid, um, it was, it was always rando. Like, she'd either okay. come home with something that I didn't even know I dreamt of. Like, yeah, <gasps> this is so cool. Or, or I'd be like, do you even know me? You know? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was like one or the other. But this particular Christmas, my mom hit it out of the park. She okay. got me all of these cool, little, unusual toys. Like, not not the stuff I circled in my Sears catalog, okay? Oh, And looking wow. back, I suspect that the uh -huh. reasons were financial. I suspect, okay. you know, that um, we, we were ha probably uh, having some, you know, my parents were not living large, let's say. So, um, I got this Dakin lion. Oh. It was a stuffed lion and he was like lying on the ground, you know, like with his paws out front and his legs out the side, you know, like just sort of sitting there. And of course, um, I named him Aslan for of the, of course you did. Right. For the, um, the Narnia yes. books. Yes. And, the whole Christmas, everything I opened was just some really cool, neat little toys, like these weird little Hallmark uh, Roadster cars that my mother found and um, uh, some neat little like sweaters and socks and hats and stuff and just some super cool stuff. But mostly what I remember is uh, my brother was a baby, just a little baby. And uh, he was probably like seven, eight months old. Let me do the math Oh, here. a real baby. baby. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. he's probably nine months old, ten months old. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so there was our little family, you know, my mom and my dad and my brother and me. And it was all cozy because we were gathered in front of the fire eating, right? <laughs> because it was warm there. And it, and uh, it was just, it was such a beautiful uh, little Christmas memory. Absolutely my favorite Christmas of all time. Totally. And How lovely. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that nice? I, I really love, uh -huh. that's why I, part of the reason I love Christmas time is because, you know, the lights and the decorations and the music and all that, if I want, I can tap into that Christmas, you know, because yes. there were other Christmases that sucked, but right. no, of course, but that it was depends. a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we talk? Um, well, okay. Before we get into the Christmas you and I spent together, 
Um, let's talk a little bit about the traditions. So with your family, were you Mm -hmm. open on the Christmas Eve, open on the Christmas morning? Like what was your whole schedule? You know, my real Christmas experiences were on Christmas Eve at my grandmother's house, the Italian side. Um, my mom did a Christmas day at our sunny California, like ranch style home and just didn't ever (laughs) feel really Christmassy, although it was of course wonderful. Yeah. But at my grandmother's house, it was always, you know, it was at night. In California, it's hard to feel Christmassy because it's like sunny, you know? Right. But when it's at night, you can pretend it's, maybe it's snowing outside. Yeah. So I'd, we'd go to my grandmother's every Christmas Eve because, you know, midnight mass and, you know, it's different for the Catholics. Sometimes they do a big thing on Christmas Eve, but it would be dark. We'd go to her house. We'd count Christmas lights on the way over there. Um, you know, people's houses that were lit up. We'd get over there. Um, she kept her house very dark, just always. Mm -hmm. So she always had like a white Christmas tree or like a silver Christmas tree, you know, with like those late sixties ornaments on it. Like the, the weird creepy elves that now they've made into (laughs) elf on the shelf, but back then they were actual just guys on the tree and like weird reindeers and kind of creepy looking ornaments. And then the paper on the Christmas, uh, on the gifts were very like, uh, geographical groovy kind of like, you know, instead of red and green, it would be like silver, turquoise, blue, bright pink and gold you know (laughs) the craziest colors Uh, that's kind of like where my color palette started from like look at this shade of like magenta with gold you know just anyway all the the christmases were different in the late 70s um they just the colors in the 60s i think they were just a little bit different with with the silver tree and all that but yeah she kind of still had that through the years she kept that because why would you rebuy all your christmas stuff right 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 and uh, there was always a nut bowl, like the, that wooden nut bowl with like Brazil nuts and like nuts that you would crack with a nutcracker. Has anyone ever actually eaten nuts out we of that did. bowl? Really? I always ate the uh, hazelnuts. Yeah. we Everybody ate them because we were starving. We we're like, can this mother, can this damn food hurry up? You know? You know, I, and then, uh, I'd never yeah, ate anything ate out of those bowls. Like I, I always thought it was like, uh, oh, no, we did. you know some scary uh old like from was scary five christmases ago you know <laughs> they were probably so old but i was like I, i'm gonna crack this nut you know i'm all excited christmas carols were playing um and then of course the the big ham comes out and we all sit around the table and we get to you know unwrap the gifts and we my sister and i were the only children so it was a small gathering of maybe six people but we were the only kids at the time. So it was, uh, it was really lovely. It was really fun. And it was a nighttime thing. Ours, uh, we, our, our schedule was a little bit, a little bit different. So we had, um, I was very blessed to have the two sets of grandparents, um, which was super cool. Uh, so my dad's parents were, uh, they were very proper, you know, um, like that that house uh, and I've talked about about my Oma and Opa um in in previous podcasts but their home was very um traditional and you know dinner was with linen napkins and uh, my my grandmother had beautiful like old Johnson Brothers china you know and she my Oma she was such a good cook I mean seriously I've never had food even at Michelin star restaurants like I've never had food as good as she made it she was just a fantastic yeah, a, a you, real you chef. talked about her on the Easter episode. I, yeah. I feel like I know her very well. Yeah, she made fantastic food. Um, so her house, we would go to my dad's parents, my Oma and Opa's, on Christmas Eve, and they lived in this cute little, neat, perfect neighborhood with these cute little Cape Cods, this kind of split level, larger Cape Cods. And her home was always spotless, totally perfect. She had little Hummel figurines and she had a baby grand piano, a Steinway, by the way, and a little fireplace. Everything was just so neat and perfect. And she had old cabinets, like the original cabinets from when they moved in, in the like mid 40s. And it was all perfect, though, like everything, the bathroom tiles, everything was original. But she just kept it so perfect and so neat. And I just loved her house. It was so warm and cozy. And she would do these tasteful little Christmas decorations, you know, like she had, she would bring out the one box every year 
put the little wreath on the door. You know, she hit, her Christmas tree looked exactly the same every year. Like it was perfect, you know, with the bulbs exactly perfect and all the little ornaments perfect. And, and she always had a, a very, um, she would, she was, had like the beautiful thick trees, you know, not the crazy wide ones with the branches splayed all over, but just like the real neat, compact, um, beautiful tree. And she would make oyster stew, which sounds gross, but it's really good. And uh, so we would, my, my brother and I would open our presents from them on Christmas Eve. And the, you know, we'd get their cocktail hour. Um, she always had bugles, you know, those bugles and Cheetos for me. Now, did you stick the bugles on your fingers? Hells yeah, totally. Of course. Yeah, in fact, I used to stick the Cheetos in the bugles. So, folks, if you've never tried it, it's really good. But <laughs> my and my Oma would uh, she would have Pepsi for me or Coke. Actually, she had these little glass Coke bottles. Like everything in her house was so neat and perfect. Like she wouldn't buy the big Coke bottle, even though it was cheaper. She bought the little, cute vintage Coke bottles because she liked them. Well, it's more beautiful. Yeah, yeah you don't exactly. Want the big... Ex- yeah. Everything in her home was just well appointed, as they say. And then she would switch me to uh, 7-Up at some point because, of course, I started revving up on caffeine and sugar. Um, but they would let my brother and me uh, open um, our gifts, like one gift ahead of time, you know, one gift before dinner, and then we would sit there at dinner, like wringing our hands, you know, we couldn't wait for dinner to be over. And then my Oma would, we would have dessert and it's like, you'd scarf your dessert down. You couldn't wait because that was the other thing. Oma was the art, uh, the artiste rapper. Like she, her, her gifts, she could have been like a Neiman Marcus gift wrapper. Everything was perfect. All the seams and everything. She would lay them all out like under the tree, you know, and there were always tons of them. We were very spoiled. Even if it wasn't like fancy, expensive stuff, we always had a lot to open. I got a lot of uh, Fisher Price toys, you know, blocks, um, Legos, you know, that kind of stuff. And she would always buy me these cute little dresses. Um, But it was fun. They would sit uh, finally, she would make the coffee and then they would all sit in the living room and then everyone would hand out presents and we would all open oh, one at a time. Yeah, it was nice. It was just fan. It was the memories are so great. And then at some point I would exhaust myself and I would go upstairs to her little den where she had her ironing board and she had her sewing machine and all stuff, you know, all, all that stuff. And I would take a nap. And then my parents would sit downstairs and I could hear them laughing, you know, muffled laughter and stuff. And and then they would come upstairs when I would be all groggy and sleepy. And dad and mom would load the car up with all the gifts and dad would have the car running in the driveway. And then they, you know, I'd be like asleep and they'd have to push my arm in the sleeves. You know, dad would carry me out to the car and then we would drive home. And it was always like, like we'd pull out the driveway and two minutes there'd be two minutes of silence and my dad would go oh that was fun (laughs) and mom would go oh that that duck was delicious that oh that's cute she she, you know yeah you know it was it was just the greatest memories ever I really really miss them terribly miss them terribly um but then Bill and Helen yeah totally different story the next what? morning oh my gosh so the next morning we would go to mom's parents bill and helen who ran the saloon you know that was their family grandma business helen. oh yes yeah of course. grandma yes. helen grandpa bill so they they ran this uh family restaurant slash tavern um and, the pink panther that's right the pink panther right um and uh my my grandma would invite every relative within like 600 miles if you were a you know cousin by marriage by adoption by you know neighbor uh, you met somebody once like (laughs) there were people there everybody was aunt and uncle and I had no idea who half of them were it was like so nice um oh it was so cool and there'd be like 35 people and she would have it at the restaurant she would close the restaurant 
cook like these two giant turkeys in the big commercial ovens, you know, and she made my grandma Helen makes or, or made stuffing with golden raisins, which sounds really gross. And my dad hates it no, to this it day. It sounds really good. But it, it is really good. Like you take traditional stuffing and you boil the raisins to soften them up and then you toss them in there. Not the brown raisins. It's got to be the golden ones. And there's just something about the little um, tart sweetness of the raisins in the stuffing that makes it really good. So she'd make that. She'd make vats of mashed potatoes, just vats. And since it was at the bar, my grandpa, you know, he'd pour drinks all day. Everyone was like hammered ass after, you know, like dinner and three hours later. The the present wrapping was... (laughs) Let's say it was it was hasty. <laughs> Stuff was just kind of wrapped up, and and you wouldn't always have like everything covered, <laughs> like like somebody would have a piece of wrapping paper that was too small for the gift, and they just went ah screw it, and they just taped it. You know, <laughs> it was like, and the kids, the the present opening sounded like this, <laughs> like right, like paper tearing and boxes flying and all this shit, and then somebody would start crying. It was oh, really, yeah, really, always. it was chaos, total chaos. Yeah. And yeah. her restaurant was decorated within an inch of its life. Every spare surface wall, table, window, huge lights, you know, those popcorn little snowmen and reindeer. And, and she had, uh, she had like um, uh, tons of garland, like garland everywhere, garland covering every surface. And lots of, uh, she would handwrite these signs in that old fashioned script that said, Merry Christmas, or, or actually she always wrote Xmas, Merry Xmas. Yeah. So did mine. Isn't that funny? I wonder if that's a With generation all the silver thing. stuff. It was like Xmas. And I was like, what is that? Yeah. 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 So th- that was always fun too. Totally different experience. And, uh, and my cousins, uh, Bill and Chris and Michelle, shout out Michelle. Um, we, you know, we always had a great time. Um, we got lots of fun presents Grandma and Grandpa, that was the whole thing where they, you know, like you and your sister, Aim, um, Michelle and and I would get the, you know, I'd get the pink one, she'd get the yellow one, she'd get the blue yes. one, I'd get the orange one, you know, always got the same stuff, but it was really, really fun. Um, and like most families, when my, uh, when Grandma Helen passed away, um, everybody just lost touch and stopped doing it, and it was kind of a bummer, but... I do look back on those just fun. And and they always had the Christmas music piping in, you know, um, it was, it was just a, a great time. I miss that. And I think like the, it's, it's a combination of the warmth and the vibrations of all these people, you know, really well, Mm -hmm. and you feel their love and care. There's a, there's a combination of that vibration. I don't know what else to call it. And also the smell of something really good cooking and also just this joy in the air and the anticipation of opening up the gifts. So it was a combination of all these beautiful things. Right. And yeah. it's just a neat feeling. Yeah, I, I agree. And it wasn't ever, I'm sure that every year when I was a little kid, there was some gift I was, you know, dying for it because uh, all the Saturday morning commercials made me want it. <laughs> um, but, yes. you know, it's funny. Those aren't really the memories. Like I have a couple memories, like the one of the the lion and, and the year that my dad wheeled the bike in, um, which we covered in a, Big one. yeah, in a recent um, podcast. But um, I don't remember the presence so much, you know, it's more about, um, like you said, it's more about being around. Uh, people that I loved and I felt really loved like I felt good um you, you know it was pre-divorce and and I think that's a huge Gen X thing right because most of us are kids of divorce and when our parents divorced everything changed Christmas became like very much weird very much you you really hit that on the head it was pre-divorce for a lot of us when we were still kids and maybe our parents were staying together because oh we don't want to hurt the kids but yeah, you know, it, as girls, you had like the ribbons in your hair, maybe, or you had the special pinafore, or you had some special outfit in your your patent leather shoes and your tights. And a lot <laughs> of us had little white tights and little black shoes. Yeah. 
and it felt it was one of the last times that things were rather formal for I mean cuz 70s never really got formal but these people that were in their heyday in the 40s our grandparents they still did formal dinners yes and that yes. doesn't happen as much anymore and you know we got the tail end of that you know our parents could have been sick of all of that and then they all kind of turned more casual Mm-hmm. So we grew up with rather casual Tupperware at the TV tray, but their right. parents were rather formal and we got, we got to experience that. And then as we grew up, we got to pick which way we wanted to do it. And a lot of us went back to the formalities. I do the tablecloth and the linen and I, I went back to that and you know, what's going to happen is my child is going to go and do the TV trays. So <laughs> there you go. I don't know. I don't know because uh, maybe it's a phase thing. Like I do find now, um, my my mom and I usually celebrate dinner, um, and we you know we sit at the dining room table. Like we don't eat in front of the TV. We we you know I put on old like classic Christmas music and we set the table and um, you know in fact I do a whole tablescape. Even, you know, sometimes it's not the two of us. Sometimes like there are more people. Uh, some A couple of years, it's been just the two of us. But because um, my dad, you know, he's he's not he doesn't live here. He lives down in Florida. So um, mm. I think that the whole TV culture thing plays a role, too, because like you said, when, once you start like inviting the TV into the whole scenario, I mean, all those Christmases like at my Oma's and at my grandma's um the tv was never on and it it they turned it on afterward when there was a football game like you know there it's not like we had no tv and at my oma's house um sometimes they would turn on the tv after coffee and after the presents and all that kind of stuff but the tv was not on um, while we ate dinner, it wasn't on while we engaged with each other, while we opened presents and, you know, while I'm sitting there eating the bugles and the Cheetos and drinking the Coke. Like, I think that's a huge, uh, huge deal. Um, you know what, you guys, if you go out and find a movie called Avalon, it's a, it's a long movie and it's about these immigrants that come to America. Um, and, and it, it spans like decades of this family. And that movie is the best example I've ever seen of explaining how TV just destroyed, um, you know, the family, like basically destroyed the family unit. And it's a, it's a beautiful movie, very stunning and, and great. Um, I think it was Barry Levinson maybe who directed it. Uh, I could be wrong, but, um, anyway, check that out because I, I think, I think looking back, um, I think that'll be the difference same with, with your son. I think he's going to appreciate all of that and he'll probably continue it. Like you go through a phase in college or like you and I with, uh, or you and me with, um, uh, working on Christmas, you know, I mean, sometimes you have a certain phase where you, you know, you, you're waiting tables, you're working certain retail groceries or, or like when I was a TV reporter and you just worked on Christmas and it wasn't all that special, you know? Um, should we talk about the Christmas we spent? We should. And I want to say that there, there's a little bit of a shift and it's a sad shift from where you are kind of the delight in the room in your ribbons and tights <laughs> yeah. to where like there's either new to younger children that come in or you're coming in as kind of maybe a moody teenager or an older young, you know, a young adult yeah. and the magic isn't there for you because you've realized things about the world and you know, you're not a child, which mm-hmm. is all right, but you're also not like so adorable to everybody. And that's a little bit of a sad thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's the time when you really are an adult and you're like, wait a second, I actually have to work. <laughs> and that's also a sad thing too. So that brings us to what you, where you are right now. Right. Yeah. And, and for many of us, that teen period also coincided with our parents splitting up. That's so right. it, it, it was like a, a lot of whammies at once, right? Where mm-hmm. Very I, I much. mean, that's a great observation. You, 
you are still a child because you're not, you know, you're not a full blown adult, but you're not a little kid anymore. Right. So you're a minor, but you're not like a baby. And yeah, um, maybe it's like the cousin Oliver syndrome where, you know, (laughs) there's like cute kids that they bring in because the rest of you aren't so cute anymore. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I definitely have some blanks in my teenage years. I don't really even remember a lot of Christmases uh, specifically because they were not happy. They were not happy at all. So maybe my brain kind of let those go. And that's why I kind of remember so vividly that one really great Christmas in 75. Interesting. You know, and, and that that might be part of the whole nostalgia movement, too, is probably a lot of us Gen Xers, right? We we have these strange um psyche wounds you know from Mm -hmm. uh, families breaking up or whatever so i think for us it's fun to look back before all that stuff happened um but let's yeah so so let's lighten the mood up a little and so um for those of you that are just catching us for the first time you can go back to our pilot episode and aim and i explain how we met um and the the 10 second version is we met waiting tables back in LA like 20 years ago at a quote unquote, very famous deli. 25 years ago, almost. Was it? Was it? Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It was like 97. Let's pretend it was 10 years ago. Oh, I (laughs) like like five years ago. ago. (laughs) I mean, I like that we've been friends that long, but (laughs) I don't like, I don't like being so old that like I was a grown up 20 years ago. (laughs) No, no, we weren't even grown ups. We were we were young women. That's right. Yeah. So we one year um, we worked on Christmas Day at the famous deli, and we had the seven to three shift. Remember that? I barely remember this because I um, blocked out a lot of these years. But so oh. I just remember being very depressed. A family was like, "Eh, don't really care if you come," um, and they were all broken apart. So that was just depressing. And then I think I was like, I kind of feel closer to these people who are at this restaurant than I do my own family. So I didn't mind Mm -hmm. uh, working. Yeah. 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 In my case, my, both my parents were on the East coast and I was in LA. I didn't have any, um, family here uh, or well in LA and my, uh, my friend, Karen, shout out Karen, um, her family lived out there and they invited me um for oh. christmas um and i'm not sure why i didn't go that year though um maybe hmm. they, maybe they weren't there maybe they spent christmas um it's possible they spent christmas like on vacation or something because normally i would have gone there they were sort of my surrogate family in in mm. california um but i worked we, we were probably getting paid we were probably getting holiday pay or some kind of good oh, yeah. pay maybe. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were getting paid time and a half. Oh, okay. Um, and I anticipated that the tips would be better because it's Christmas mm. Day, which it totally wasn't. No. Like no one cared. No. These people no, give a shit. Yeah, the customers were like, Where's my you know, where's my where's my whatever? Where's my bagel? Where's my crep lock? I remember yeah. they were like, Where's my crep lock? Where's my pickles? Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. no no uh you know, and <laughs> Some of them came in with like their Santa hats on and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, these people would be fun. No, <laughs> no, no, they were no one was fun. Right. So, exactly. but when our shift ended, um, I was in kind of a similar mood as you. Cause I just felt sad and, and, um, it was depressing. It was incredibly depressing. Yeah. And I remember also my boyfriend at the time was, he had gone home for Christmas. So I was alone, alone. But he was a schmuck anyway, wasn't he? Kind of. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't want to. All right. Whatever. I don't want to. Nobody. Knows I, I don't mean. think he was a schmuck. I just think we weren't mm. really right for each other. All right. That's um, all right. There no were worries. other schmucks to come. Okay. okay. <laughs> after him, but no, Shush. I I don't think he was so much all of a schmuck. Right. Um, he 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 definitely left in a uh, blaze of uh, schmuckery. Um, li- yeah, <laughs> lies and cheating and all that. But um. Yeah, mm. God bless him. I'm, I'm sure he's very happy now, and I hope so. Um, but anyway, so he, he was gone that that year. And Joel, who was another waiter there. Oh, yeah. Remember Joel? So He was the best. Joel also was kind of in a mood. 
So the three of us went, uh, once we clocked out, um, unlike you, I did all my side work, but. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, I never, I was never like, did the side work. I was always like, oh, I better, you know, I don't know. I should have been more like you, but we, we walked no. across <laughs> the parking lot to this old man bar in a yeah. strip mall in Woodland Hills. Ugh. And like, you, it's like the type where you open the door and it's like these dark booths, you know, and these little wobbly tables with the wood paneled walls. Yeah. Yeah. Like old flashing, like one strand of like (laughs) big lots Christmas lights. Right. Right. With like a couple burnt out. It was all crooked. Right. It's awful. And some like leaning tabletop Christmas tree that, that you could tell was like 15 years old. It kind of looked like the set of like Laverne and Shirley's Christmas or something, but it was like 1997. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we were the only people in there. I feel like while we were there, some people did come trickle in and out like old men, but we uh, commandeered the jukebox and we sat there for about six hours. Did we really say I don't even no remember this? No joke. We sat there this. until like nine o'clock that night and we were uh, severely inebriated. Oh, okay. That um, makes sense. Yeah. We, we did a lot of shots um, and we... Did? What, were, what kind? Uh, I remember drinking a lot of Southern Comfort. Oh, for goodness um, sake. But there were also, Gosh. there was a lot of beer too. We drank a mm. lot of beer and we each told our stories about our favorite Christmases. We did? Oh, yeah, cool. we did. And then and then we just got into this whole like discussion about, you know, families and, and Christmas and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, we were basically three sad uh, servers still in our server uniforms. So mm. we probably smelled like pastrami and everything with our yep. little red polo shirts. And, uh, you know, and like salad dressing. Well, red Wiped polo on shirt the, in the shape of a hand. Don't forget, my slacks were stapled together in the crotch area. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I had an apron over it, so I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. And my uh, my shoes, the sole of my shoes was literally like coming off at the toe. So I think I Mine had some electrical tape. Mine was glued with Elmer's glue. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think... I, I might have this wrong, but I feel like because all three of us were disappointed with the tips we made, mm-hmm. I, I have this vague memory of us, like the reason we ended up being there for six hours was we got mad and we decided we were going to blow all of our tips like at that bar on that day. And that's why that it, sounds it took us, like, like six something hours. I would have yeah. either thought up myself and demanded that the both of you do. Right. Or that I would have been like, great idea. Yeah, I don't remember who you might have come up with it. Um, Probably. And and you know, and then as the songs went, so did we. So when it was like, you know, have yourself, that you one know, probably made me. Too yeah, up. we yeah. would get all like morose and just I'd be sitting there like spinning my beer bottle, staring down the, you know, <laughs> Joel's just like. Ugh. And then something would, you know, jingle bell, jingle bell. And then we'd, we'd suddenly we were like, oh, my God, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that was that was a tough Christmas. That was really I had like 10 Christmases Christmas. like that in a row. <laughs> oh, aim. I did. And it, they were all like that. And some of them were involved just me in an apartment just staring at a wall. <laughs> <laughs> With like a flashing, you know, the red Christmas lights flashing slowly, ironically you at you. <laughs> I have to say, this is why I disagree with the fact that TV killed family. TV stood in for my family for many years and actually brought me much joy. When I was sitting by myself, like on a mattress in an apartment with nothing, mm-hmm. I could turn on Charlie Brown's Christmas and just that Christmas time <laughs> yeah. it's here with a little jing, 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 jing. That was enough to keep me from, you know, jumping off the building. So I, I feel like some of these TV specials were really, really important to those of us who were lonely. I, oh, I agree 100%. I, I think whether During we wanted family it... time, it wasn't good. But a lot of times, you know, if your family was fighting, if your family was broken apart in different rooms, you know, I still went and looked at watch these shows and felt a little bit of nostalgia and felt a little bit of warmth. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think the thing is whether we wanted it to or not, TV kind of replaced all that. Like 
for me, um, the TV's always on. You know, it is. It's like my friend. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's kind of a which came first thing, right? Like you can you can look at uh, how it kind of snuck in and invaded the family space. And then instead of talking to each other, um, you know, they're they're just sitting there watching TV. And I think I think it probably happens backwards like the tv didn't cause it but when there's a rift in the family right and the and the parents start falling apart or you know things start going wrong you you bring the tv in as a pacifier as a you know something something else to distract your mind and your heart and yeah it works out nicely uh for sure (laughs) All those. Yeah, nicely. And not only that, but even during the happy times when your dad's at work or your mom's in the kitchen and there's nothing necessarily wrong, but it's so exciting to hear that Charlie Brown's Christmas is coming up on Friday. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't even really care about that show all that much when I was a kid. I was like, eh, Charlie Brown, whatever. I like the chipmunks better, you know, but it was fun to anticipate these shows. They were special. They were only coming on this Friday night. Yeah. You know, so you're just so excited in those those blasted claymation Rankin Bass, those claymation specials. Oh, I love those. Yeah. And those and you are just my favorite. You know, those are TV and to people who didn't have my mom was kind of new at doing Christmas. They were supposed to not do Christmas in their church and then they kind of just started doing it. So we had decorations on the curtains instead of a tree. You know, it was a little <laughs> a little crazy. But the TV was this window into I could see the the windows at Bloomingdale's mm-hmm. from the valley. I could see the German Christmas markets from the valley. I had a window. It's all these different cultures, all these other cartoons, um, all of these. Um, you know, it's a wonderful life. I had a window to White Christmas. So the TV was lovely during Christmas. It could be whatever you wanted it to be. It depended on where you were in your life and what your situation was. But I, I find it a really great part of Christmas during the 70s and 80s. You know, like we, we never went on vacation. So, yeah. so like, you know, you said like seeing other, uh, places and cultures and all that. And those specials, it's hard for people now to understand, like back then you couldn't watch it. Like you couldn't just dial it up on your phone, right? You had to wait until Christmas to see the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Yeah, like, and that that anticipation was almost like waiting to open a gift, mm-hmm. but you got to open it the week before. Yeah. So it was very special and it was exciting and it was a big part of my life. Television was a big part of my life. I, I'm going to say for good. I'm going to say it comforted me during the times it needed to comfort me. And even if I'm watching the Brady Bunch have Christmas, but I'm sitting in my dad's crappy Sherman Oaks apartment that he's mooching off some lady, you know, it's like, I'm almost there with the Brady's. Yeah. It was an escape. I loved Christmas in good times and bad. I mean, I loved the Christmas uh, TV. I love television and I love that they would show certain films. What, What did they show on TV every Christmas? Was it Wizard of Oz or something? They would show the Wizard of Oz at Thanksgiving. Yeah. And at Christmas, they would show a Christmas carol. Usually the old the old one from like the 30s or something. And uh, I, I love that one too. I, I really loved the Claymation Rankin Bass specials because those look like little dolls to me. And, the, and they had songs. So, um, the, you know, it was like a little musical. And the songs, of course, they stuck in my head. And I loved all the messages, you know, um, they were all about celebrating the misfit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're on the island of, what is it? Misfit toys. I'm the worst. <laughs> oh, silver and gold. Silver yeah, the little and... Burl Ives snowman keeps patting his belly. He's got his little pocket watch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, they're fantastic. They were, they were great. Um, there's some interesting videos, uh, you guys, on on YouTube. If you search some of the Rankin Bass stuff, you can find some old videos on like how they made it and some old behind the scenes pictures and stuff. And um, I mean, they literally had these little dolls, like they were, you know, 
doing all this Christmas claymation. time is here the most wonderful time of the year a deli for blah blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. yeah it, it, just those little songs and i remember not hearing that from my own house but either hearing it on those carols on these television shows or from school when you would line up on these bleachers mm-hmm. in the auditorium and you all sing jingle bells and your yeah. family comes and watches you. And then the next class piles in and they all sing Feliz Navidad in our case in our in our uh, in the valley. It was always right. a lot of Spanish. The risers, um, the infamous risers. Yeah, the risers. And um, you know, it was a big deal. And it was a lot of fun. And then you get introduced to like the nutcracker and like, you know, school will do a nutcracker play. We did one Nutcracker play. So sometimes the culture seeps in from um, just the store windows or the television or school. Oh, the store windows. I loved the store windows. There were uh, like when I lived in New York, I went down to see the Barney's windows and I, I felt like I was five years old. Like it was it was so magical. You know, all these people are like, oh, that's cool. And I'm just like, oh. Oh, my oh God, it's I so love special. This. Yeah, it the was Bergdorf really Goodman cool. The Goodman windows, like mm-hmm. you guys got to see some beautiful uh, displays over there. Yeah, there Fifth was Avenue, a. Although. There used to be a store in downtown Buffalo called AM and A's, uh, and every year they did the mechanical uh, windows, and it was a big deal. Like in the fifties and sixties, and uh, part of the seventies. Um, people would literally make a day of going downtown to look at the windows, you know, and uh, the store's not there. And um, eventually they, you know, like most things, it just kind of went away. But I always wondered what happened to those, um, to all the toys. I think one of the windows got saved um, and is like in a somebody's museum or something somewhere. But that's cool. Yeah, I just, anything that was like, um, mechanical and I was really into the whole idea of the magic of Christmas like I really when I was a little kid yeah. I really believed that there was some type of magical thing about the season right? and you could you know like you could um, make amends with somebody that you were uh, arguing with or you could um, you know all those Hallmark movies all the stuff that happens in all those Christmas movies Christmas miracles, you know, I, I really did believe all that stuff. Well, it was so cool. And I did not get told about Santa Claus. So I don't know how I can't speak on how that all works with like leaving the cookie for Santa and Santa comes down the chimney. How did that all work as for kids? Well, I can speak to that because I remember vividly when I still believed in Santa Claus. Like I had I, I was sort of of two minds like when I was about five, I think, uh, maybe four. Yeah. I think, I think I, I realized Santa was a myth when I was about five, but I remember being four and writing a letter to Santa because I wanted a camera. And I think I told the story in one of our podcasts. I can't remember which one. You did. But, um, I wanted a camera so bad and my, uh, my parents were like, well, you know, you got to tell Santa. And I even went to the mall Santa and told the mall Santa, you know, I was like, well, and somehow in my mind, I knew that he wasn't the actual Santa, but I felt like he was like a proxy Santa. (laughs) You know, like I still thought he was part of the whole group. (laughs) And Christmas morning, I got up and went to the tree and there's an envelope suspiciously in my mother's handwriting. But yeah. it was from Santa. And oh, and Santa God. said, you know, sorry, but there wasn't enough money to get a camera this year. And Santa got me a high chair for my doll instead. And I, I was devastated because I didn't want a high Break chair. Break it over the table. I would have picked that thing up and busted <laughs> I it know. I was like, I don't want a lousy high chair. I want a damn camera. You know. I love that your parents said to ask Santa so you could they could blame it on him instead of right. Them. I know. I, they were like, I sorry. I bet you. You know what? I bet you though that they intended to get me the camera, and they just couldn't find one that they could afford. I I think that's kind of what happened. I'll have to ask my parents about that. I'll be like, yeah, remember that? Remember that? That was uh, oh yeah. That was gosh. huge. I, I, it was huge. And another part of Christmas that I loved, I loved candy canes and peppermints, <gasps> yes. and I liked the baked 
goods of Christmas. Oh yeah, the food. Let's talk about the food. The ribbon candy and yeah. um, just pretty, you know, like the nutcrackers and just and, and of course those little lifesaver storybooks. We always got one of those. My mother <gasps> or my grandmother those. You open it. And I'm like, wow, did I really need all butterscotch or like all mint? Some of those I was like, ooh, don't really want oh, those. Oh, no, you got to get the assorted one. You even, gotta... well, it was all different ones. There's like 12 in there, right? Yeah. But even when it was like all wild cherries, suddenly it wasn't a special. It's yeah. like the crunch berry theory. Like when it was like all, all the colors of the Lifesavers, you wanted the red. But then when there was the all red version, you're like, mm, yeah, no. I kind of miss that green. Yeah, you got to you, know? you got to have the assorted one. And the... The lip smacker assorted little book thing that was man when I saw that if I got any kind of beauty products like like uh, perfume oh mm-hmm. remember that denim uh, there was a blue jeans perfume um, yeah. I remember I got that one year and I felt so grown up I was like oh, yeah wow look at me with there my was this, this, uh, I really liked the Tinkerbell um, play makeup and it wasn't really Tinkerbell from Disney. I'm sure a lot of you remember this Tinkerbell was kind of a Holly Hobby looking girl with a little bonnet on. Yeah. And it was always gingham or striped or denim and it always had a little bow. Yeah. And it was like Tinkerbell and it had a little atoma- atomizer, that little puff ball thing. Oh, yeah, a little. Him. And it was like bubble bath, lotion and, <laughs> you know, bath gel. And it was like one ounce. So you just dump it in a big old clump in the water and you're like, oh. right. But they also had peel and stick um, nail polish, you know, and little powder poofs and all this crazy stuff. That was probably my my favorite, favorite thing that relatives would buy when they went to the drugstore. They'd always buy us something like that. And I <laughs> love the packaging. The packaging was amazing. Yeah. So um, did you guys. So, um, oh, wait, wait, we were talking about the food. Um, mm. Did you have a special store or something like every Christmas, you know, somebody would have to go to the store and get the whatever cake or the something cookies? Or no, something usually like that. somebody brought some sort of Hickory Farms. Oh, yeah. You know, stuff Hickory to snack Farms. on before yeah. we ate some kind of big roast of sorts. From the mall, the kiosk From in the, the mall. mall right? Yes. You'd go to Hickory Farms. And then there Farms. was always nuts and there was always hard candy, like yeah. ribbon candy. Um and lots of peppermint, like I said, and giant candy cane sticks and things right. like that. Very pretty, pretty candy. I had a lot of friends who their mothers made Christmas cookies. My mom oh, did not really did. get into the Christmas cookies. but My mother did. It was uh, the, the ones that, that were like the special, um, you know, oh, peppermint bark. I still, my knees buckle. Like I love peppermint bark. And um, those peanut butter cookies with the Hershey Kiss mushed I on the those, top. Yeah, I make those sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, and then the little cornflake uh, wreaths where you would use like a whole bottle oh. of green food dye and the two little cinnamon things. Um, there oh, were lots of lots of those like yeah those special cookies like some I it was always somebody always would bring a them sugar in. Cookie. We always did a sugar cookie with an icing of sorts and made mm-hmm. like a snowman. You yeah, know, with a little scarf. And then, of course, gingerbread houses. We actually did gingerbread houses. My mother would make the parts and we'd put up the sides and the roof with icing and jam a bunch of candy. And they'd be so solid with egg whites in the frosting <laughs> that you could just hit it with a hammer and it would like break the hammer. You know, I love that kind of frosting, though. I love mm-hmm. that. Like the like nowadays you get the supermarket cookies, those big Christmas sugar cookies. They're almost like shortbread. They're so good. Uh huh. They're those. beautiful. Just really beautiful baked goods and um, pretty music. Mm-hmm. And just, just it's a beautiful time just from the sound and the sight of it, let alone everything else it stands for. Yeah. It, it's it's really a pretty time. It's a pretty time, a very visual time of year. Oh yeah, lots of uh, smells and sights and sounds right it's a total visceral experience i that's why i really love christmas we started getting real trees and i we had a real tree every year up until my parents split apart and then i don't remember what happened but we actually got a tree and if it was too small we'd put it on like a little end table with a little cloth and it would be like this tall thing oh nice and the smell of it was so beautiful and i still get a fresh real one every year for the smell of the pine it's just so pretty yeah I, i love that smell i I have Mm -hmm. not had a real tree in many, many years because um, it it was too hard. Like 
for the apartments I've been in and, or the, you know, the years where I, I did, um, was living by myself or something. Um, it was too hard to wrangle like a tree, you know? So I would get the, the ones that you screw the, <laughs> the fake ones or there's, it comes in three parts. There's like the top, the middle and the bottom, but some of them are nice. They're getting better now. Like, and you can buy the, uh, scented, scented spray and the little Does that work? treesicles. You know what? It depends on the spray. I, mm. I have a spray that I just got. As a matter of fact, it's right here. Christmas tree, uh, Christmas tree scent spray. And it's by EBM creations. Mm. Um, I got it on Amazon and it's really cool. Like I tried it on a wreath I made and it does smell really good. I'm sure it's not as strong and it's not, you know, it's a, it's a reasonable facsimile. Let's say that it's not uh, good enough to be um, to substitute, I think, for the smell of a real tree. Because the sap, like, you know, that smell of the sap and stuff, I just love it. Yeah, and there are lots of, um, you know, like the oyster stew, my Oma, she only ever made it at Christmas, Christmas Eve. So we only had it then. And I wonder, I wonder about that whole idea of, um, you know, now we live in a world where we can get anything we want at our fingertips. And that's a really good thing in a lot of ways, but it also, you know, I can watch Charlie Brown's Christmas anytime I want. And so does it, you know, does it sort of take away the specialness of, of some of these things? And, um, I, 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 th- I don't know. I have like mixed feelings about it. Like Winnie the Pooh and the blustery day, one of my favorite cartoons mm, ever, right? Yes. Rather they, blustery day. Do you remember they used to only roll that out around Thanksgiving? And, yes. And it was such a treat. It was like, oh, my God, yes. it's on, it's on. But now, I mean, I got the thing on video. Like, I can watch it anytime I want. Because <laughs> this, well, you know what? I don't pre-video. watch it, though, until Thanksgiving, though. I have all those ready, and I do put them on the background when I'm folding laundry, white mm-hmm. Christmas, just, just to fill my house with those voices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, in fact, I was doing that very thing uh, two days ago, I, it was in the evening and I was doing some cleaning and making some Christmas gifts and, uh, like craft gifts. And I put on this Hallmark movie and it was the wrong vibe. It was like, it was a Christmas movie, but it was like this movie and it was real sad and some sad stuff. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm like, I don't want this. So I had to flip around and find the right vibe because it's exactly what you said. You want to fill your house with those voices. Yeah. And, and and it's gotta be like, like, I don't want the Hallmark movie set in Hawaii at Christmas. No, No, it's gotta be snow. All the houses have to be decorated. Uh Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be like, like Christmas, you know, times 10. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just started getting into those Hallmark ones just for background. Yeah. But it has to be the right vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's always some girl like decorating the plaza and she bumps into the handyman (laughs) and you're like, oh, there he is. Yeah. Or it's, uh, the, the recurring theme I see is, uh, the, the workaholic who, just can't get into the Christmas spirit. She doesn't have time for the Christmas spirit. And then somehow she ends up meeting some handyman or she goes back home to her small town and it's like, and it's the the same handyman tow drive, tow truck driver. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's the same handsome handyman. They're always like, like, dude again. They're laborers. They're always like these sexy labor guys. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then they teach them the, the true meaning of Christmas. (laughs) Right. Why are you laughing? It's so true. Because it's just so absurd. Like, it's, I mean, the, you know, I hate to break, if there's any young women listening to us right now, like, I hate to break it to you girls, but that stuff is all fantasy. <laughs> it is lies. Wow, come it's on. You don't think lies. a handyman could show you the Christmas spirit? I oh, do. No, I, I totally do. But there isn't one, and there never will be. So, you know, Girl, it's like a fake, you know. it's a, it's a fairy tale. That's what it is. It's, you may as well, you know, lose your slipper at the ball at midnight, <laughs> you know. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it just cracks me up. Um, so, <laughs> Aim, we're out of out of time. We're out of Christmas we time. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Well, is there anything we forgot? Christmas carols. Yeah, I know. Me, too. Is mm-hmm. there anything? Um, uh... We did forget to speak of stockings. <gasps> oh. How it was fun to open your stocking. Yes. Yeah. And what how kind I just of... figured out, what? you guys, this year, 
when I see those stocking holders, those big, heavy stocking holders with a hook, and I always wonder, gosh, if you put stockings full of toys, that thing's going to slam the kid in the head and fall right on the kid. Then I realized, you guys, you're supposed to put those up before the stockings are filled and they just hang. Because I just picture it falling down on a kid's head. Anyway, stockings. Well, but then what do you do when the stocking's full? You put it down by the tree or you put it down on the heart. Oh. See, oh, I was, I was see, today I didn't years know old. that. No, I had the same thoughts. I was today years old. Like, how are you going to hang something like that with this big, heavy brick that's only like two inches thick that's going to fall right. on someone's head? Well, anyway, and you know was, that would that would fall on my head and it would cut me in the forehead and then I'd have to go get stitches forehead. on Christmas Day. Um, I'm going to say uh, stockings, honorable mention to stockings mm-hmm. and how you have to uh, random things fit in there. So you always got kind of wonky things in your stocking because right. only certain things would fit. I always got batteries. Cause, batteries oh that's actually good i always got lip smackers in there yeah yeah I'd, I, occasionally there'd be like there'd be like weird random stuff but yeah always because uh, most if i was lucky my toys required batteries you know because that means you got yeah, some you were cool very stuff lucky. right and the other honorable mention i'd like to mention is the um the certain remakes of christmas carols that were like old crooners like bing crosby or rosemary clooney who recorded 70s versions of Christmas carols, those were always out. It's like these like weird organs, and you'd be like, I have your cell phone, Merry <laughs> Little Christmas. Ding, 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 ding. You know, it was like these like wonky, non-beautiful Christmas carols that were supposed to be modern. Yeah. Have you ever heard those where it's like a bossa nova beat? Right. And it's right. like being Crosby in a turtleneck, and you're like, no. Yeah. That's not I what like I the disco, the disco remix. Or even worse. <laughs> It got up to the disco. Yeah, it's yeah. like 1968 Danny Kay. It's like, no, <laughs> yeah. we wanted 1945 Danny Kay. I don't need the bossa nova version of Rosemary Clooney's, uh, oh, holy night. The stars are <laughs> shining. You know, it's like, no. They always play those. Yeah. The little bossa nova. Yeah. And you're like, wait, this is not, I want to hear White Christmas. So, honorable mention to stockings, bad. Christmas Carol remakes. Oh yeah, oh, and um, a lot of those. no, I mean the music as yeah. the music, and also uh, honorable mention to the knockoffs from your clueless grandparents who loved you very so very much, but got you like uh, the knockoff version of Barbie and the knockoff <laughs> uh, Light Bright, you know, and you're like, damn, knockoff my, Legos. My favorite grandpa grandma uh, Christmas uh, event. When I worked at a record store uh, for many, many years through college, I worked at um, a local Buffalo record mm-hmm, chain. Yeah, you remember. You remember. <clears throat> and, the, and every Christmas, there'd yeah. be some sweet little old lady who was just like one of my grandmas coming Aww. in with a list with her little perfect handwriting. How cute. And she'd be like, do you have How the cute. greatest hits for Holland Oats? How cute! And you'd be like, uh, probably Hall and Oats. You mean, <laughs> you know, like they, they would so always have it all wrong. Sweet. And and sometimes, sometimes they'd come in, and they'd say, um, oh, I want to get my grandson, you know, a tape or whatever. And I, but I don't know what kind of music he likes. And and I'd say, well, we you can get him a gift certificate. And they'd be like, no, no, I want to have, I want a, a stocking stuffer. So I'd look at him. I go, what cut? What what's uh, his haircut? Like, what kind of haircut oh, does he have? Oh, that's so smart. And it was so funny because, you know, the grandmother would be like, oh, he has long hair. He won't cut his hair. I'm like, okay, let me take you over here to the metal smart. section, you know. And then <laughs> if, it, if it was like, oh, he shaved off half of his head and he's got a blue streak. I'm like, okay, let me take you over here to the new wave music. He probably wants, you, you know. You are so adorable. Yeah, it was funny. And I would always tell him, I'm like, look, if he doesn't like it. Yeah. Tell him not to open it, bring it back, and you can exchange yeah. it for what he does want. You know, and they, it was just, I loved it. It was one of my favorite That's parts of Christmas. So cool. Yeah, as soon as a little old lady walks in the door, I'm gonna, <laughs> people would be like, Robbie, <laughs> come on up here. That is so cute. <laughs> yeah, I, I always uh, found, because, uh, you know what, we should give honorable mention to Christmas shopping too. Mm, you know, remember yeah. the old days, the mall would be like, covered tip to toe with uh, you know all kinds of crazy um 
the colorful lights and, and there'd be a big tree in the middle of the mall and all that. Like our mm, mall here, yeah. there's barely anything. I think Did they you ha- take pictures with Santa Claus? No, I did visit no. Santa, but my parents, they weren't real uh, photo yeah. happy, but there were so many years I worked in retail during the yeah. Christmas season and um, it was hell. Like I want to yeah. tell, I, I want to do a public service announcement to everyone listening right now. All you guys, please be kind to the, even if they're not uh, as friendly as you want them to be, because you cannot believe what they go through. Let me crush them right before you oh got there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're, sorry, my cat is like jumping in my lap. Um, there were so many incidents of people just being so mean and nasty and, and just the sheer mm-hmm. volume of like, yeah. you know, like you, you wouldn't get a break for like six hours because it was just so many people. But, um, but here's the secret. I'm going to share. I'm going to share the magic secret to Christmas shopping. Okay. Or, or holiday shopping, you know, whatever. If, if you give gifts during this time of year. And it's so busy and it's so crazy, especially like if you're a Black Friday shopper or something like that. Okay. Here's the secret name. Tell me. Wear a Santa hat. Okay. No joke. You walk around normal clothes, wear your normal, you know, whatever yeah. you're wearing, but put a Santa hat on. Okay. Everywhere you go, mm-hmm. people like everyone will be all miserable and you'll be in a line with like 30 people all shift in their weight with the toasters or whatever they're buying and everyone's all crabby. You step in line with your Santa hat. Yeah. And they're like, oh, hey, Santa. Like people, people just all of a sudden, they're like, oh, oh. Funny. it totally breaks up like the misery, you know, of just That's dealing so cool. with. That's cool. Um, and I, I do it too when, um, when That's I have really to go to the advice. store for food, like Thanksgiving dinner and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll wear a Santa hat then too, because it's, oh my God, it's so, it's so nuts. Um, such good advice. Yeah. It's magical. I learned it in New York city funny. from when I was a cocktail waitress, there was a fellow cocktail waitress who came in the door with like all these bags and she's like, Oh my God, I've been Christmas shopping all day. And she was wearing a Santa hat. And I said, Oh my God, was that hell or what? She goes, Oh no, this is what I do. And she shared that secret with me. Waitress in New York city. Yeah. I was, we never uh, hear about this story. Yeah. I'll tell that story someday. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's a living. I want to hear that story next time we talk. Yeah. It was a, it was a nightclub. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, uh, Can we please talk about that soon. That whenever sounds... I hear, finally, it has happened to me <laughs> right in front. I'm like, <gasps> I have to run out of the room because it's like, wow. I mean, I love so the it song. Like it's a great. It's a, it was like 87. It was, it was a little later than that. Yeah. It was the early 90s, but um, mm. it, it was like uh, 91, great, 90. Great song. Just, you know. Um, Meeting Mr. Right, the man of <laughs> dreams. Right. Wait, that's not Christmassy. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks, you guys, for sharing uh, some time with us here and our Christmas memories. Um, we, uh, I don't know. It's just so much fun, isn't it, to just sort of go back and. and I, it's fun to go back. And I'm glad all these people, we all kind of share something in common. Those of you who grew up the same time we did. Yeah. We hope that you can turn on a show or get some kind of nostalgia going that gives you a little bit of joy this season. Right, right. Because it, it, no matter whether you celebrate Christmas or something else or nothing or, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just, yeah, it, it, it is a nice time always to sort of check yourself and think, huh, you know. Am I am I feeling the joy? Where can I find the joy? You know that. Yeah, that, absolutely. I think it's just important for us all to to try to seek some peace, right? At some point. So, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but you guys send us your takes. Send us your um, your. Oh, and and you know what? We have to say hello to all the people like in Japan, France, Germany. Um, we got Finland, um, Brazil. Uh, like people listening from all so over and, and, and we want to say hello to you guys, um, uh, during this time. So 
Yeah, we're glitterboomgirls.com. Go to our website. Um, wherever you're listening to us now, we're also available on YouTube. Uh, we have our own channel, the Glitter Boom Girls on YouTube. And there's we'll put up some videos and some links to some Christmas stuff. There's a playlist on our YouTube channel called um, uh, Show Topics. Um, it's, and it's like all the stuff that we talk about. You know, we link it up there wherever we can. And we're on Twitter, Glitter B Girls. And we're also on Insta. Like we're Insta, aim, uh, Glitter B Girls. So, um, so thanks a lot, you guys. And um, whatever you do, however you celebrate or not, um, we're just sending our love to you, right? Uh, yes! I'm, Ro- I'm Robbie Emick McPherson on the East Coast. I'm Amy Asbert on the West Coast. Thanks a lot, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.